Welcome to Steelers Weekly. I'm your host, Brian Schmidt. And as always with me, the former wide receiver to Pittsburgh Steelers, the great Dwight Stone. Dwight, how you doing? I think, we're, I think I'm doing pretty good. We're at the 16th last game coming up, right? Yeah, you know, last game of the season before the playoffs. And a uh, couple of interesting things to talk about. Uh, obviously, we'll, we'll start off with talking about the win over Baltimore. That was a classic football game, uh, classic ending. And it really comes down to uh, is with the exception of, you know, I, I think there's three quarterbacks in the NFL that it, mm-hmm. in a situation like that I want to have the ball in their hands. Yes. Uh, one obviously being Tom Brady, one obviously being Rodgers with Green Bay, and yeah. the final guy and probably the only guy would be Ben. And just roll with that. That's good to call. That's a good call. So talk about, you know, you being a former NFL receiver and, and, and you've been in these situations. You got to, you're down – Minute nine left, and you've got Ben coming in, in the huddle as your quarterback as opposed to, say, me coming in the huddle as your quarterback. Talk about the difference in confidence you're going to have as a wide receiver. I mean, you, you, first of all, when you look at the clock and you see they had scored, you're like, well, guys, they left too much time on the clock. And that's what on the other team side, the Ravens, they're saying, they didn't, if you ask them, they wouldn't want to score that fast. They wanted to score. Don't get me wrong. They're happy they scored. But if you had to ask the team, do you want to score that fast? No, you do not. Because you look on the other side and you see who they have uh, to deal with. You got Ben, of course, one of the top three quarterbacks in the NFL that for as the time management, uh, working a two-minute drill, calling the plays, it's just like having a coach on the field. And all the guys that they have confidence, the lineman was doing a good job, and you got Bell. That's not a bad guy to have behind you. And you got some other guy named Brown. That's not another guy. That's not a bad guy to have out in front of you. So you got all them guys working together, and as they move down the field, it didn't shock anybody. It's like the Ravens said, like, you know, we're not going to win this game because there's too much time on the clock. And sure enough, um, Mozart. I mean, it was just the plays and the people who stepped up and the ball Ben was throwing and the line blocking. It just everybody did their part. No one was trying to do more and no one was trying to do less. Everybody did their job. And at the end of the thing, it ended with a touchdown by your boy Brown, overstretching the ball. And if you saw it, the guy was grabbing his face mask, twisting his head. If it came down to it, they should have said it was a personal foul. But thank goodness he had the ball over the goal line to score. But that that was a uh, orchestrated that I couldn't. You want it no better than that. Yeah, that was a great catch and in, in, in play. I mean, the, the, to stretch the ball out, uh, really just a great drive. And, and, and again, as you said, uh, too much time on the clock. I mean, when you got a guy like. You know Ben Roethlisberger. You know with the weapons he has and the things he can do. You know with with a minute nine left, uh, you can and and two timeouts. Which there are a lot of times, and, and I, I saw a great little uh, video piece where where you hear Tomlin telling the offense with a minute nine left. You know I normally don't give you two timeouts, so <laughs> you know what a great situation, uh, great job, and I mean that was a great drive. Uh, you know, down 20 to 10 uh, at one point. I mean, it, it looked uh, like, man, we cannot get past this Baltimore cor- curse, but uh, great job. And, and, I, and again, I, I thought defensively uh, did not play bad at all. I no. thought defensively played well. Um, you know, Harrison came up big, uh, you know, had 10 tackles. Uh, yes. Uh, Timmons had eight. I mean, guys making plays defensively, so it was it wasn't a terrible defensive performance at all. Not at all. I mean, it's just like they had the Bengals game when they played the Bengals. It seemed like, oh man, what's going on? And they're kind of sputtering. It seemed like that's their mo now. It's like, okay, we're gonna spot you some points. Now we're gonna come back and disappoint you. You know, make y'all feel as though y'all have. But I tell you. However they're doing it, whatever it takes them to warm up, I wish they'd warm up a little faster. I know they will make the game exciting and make it people, you know, everybody watch the whole thing. But I, I can take the uh, ten-point lead. They want to win by ten points in the third quarter or the fourth quarter. But these excitement, it, it, it keeps you 
and watching the game. I know the network love it because it's good ratings, you know, but uh, the last two games they have really stepped up from behind, and everybody did their part. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, let's we'll talk a little bit about the Cleveland game. Uh, last game of the season, uh, playoffs are already – done we were, we're good talk a little bit about uh your feelings on good all these players be sitting because right now from what i'm what i'm hearing uh ben sitting brown sitting bell sitting uh at least two offensive linemen are, are sitting uh you know there may be some guys on defense i mean there, there's going to be it's going to be you know which granted you're playing the browns but uh talk, you like that don't like it uh, uh, it's one of those things that you haven't had, I guess, uh, neither Brown or Bell, like, in the, in the playoffs, so you want to make sure they're healthy. But at the same time, you want them to stay in the game, the mindset, because from when I read uh, Bell practice a day or Wednesday like any other day, you know, if he's out there, he didn't take no special day off, you know, he's out there, he said, prepared himself. I think that in the mentality, I know, what Tomlin's trying to do, but sometimes you look back like on the coach. They, they, they at, at one time, like two years in a row, they try to rest their guys, and they got into a little lull, and they end up not doing what they thought they were going to do. I, I think they should come and let them play like, you know, like a, a preseason game. Keep them in that same routine. Keep everybody together. You know, I, I'm going to play y'all, you know, depending on how we're going, you know, maybe two quarters at the most. But I want y'all to go in there and keep the, you know, everybody as a team, you know, because we sometimes see people dressed and not dressed out. It takes something away from them. You know, I tell you, them guys over there not dressed out. It's just those an awkward, awkward, I guess, setting. If you look at now, you got college guys. The college kids are now beginning to look at bowl games. Is it wrong for them to sit out during the bowl games? Thinking about saying, no, they should, they should play the games. Play the game, even though, you know, to so say some of what something similar that people are arguing about, I think they should in a way because fans are paying their hard-earned money. You know, and I know they want to keep players healthy, but at the same time, I think they do owe the fans uh, somewhat, you know, at least going out there for the first half. Yeah, I agree. I I, I think not playing them is a, is a, it's always a 50-50. Obviously, mm-hmm. if you win a Super Bowl and you go deep into it, everybody thinks it's a great idea. Exactly. If you lose in the first round, everybody everybody's going to watch do that. Um, I, I, you know, first of all, I don't mind Ben sitting. I think, mm-hmm. I think after all these years and, and everything, I, I think he's earned the right to be able to, to be able to rest. And, and obviously, you want him healthy. I, I would like to see Bell and Brown play, even if it's just a quarter, just because, like you said, you know, play it like a preseason game. Give him a couple mm-hmm. series, a couple in, and get him out. Um, but I, I find it interesting that, you know, the, the offensive, you know, they're, they're sitting at least one, if not two offensive linemen. I mean, your, your starting center is not playing. Mm-hmm. I think I heard they may sit one more. So that's, that's a lot of, of your starters not playing. And, and, and there's also, you know, some guys they may sit defensively. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's a lot of starters not playing, uh, right. You know, in a game that I again, this game doesn't mean anything. It's not going to change True. seating. It's not going to change anything. But you know, I, I think you you have to wonder what you know. Will this be a problem coming into a, to a playoff game? So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Uh, yes, I'm with you. You know, once we get there, I mean, we we may be talking uh, a couple weeks from now. We're going, boy, they should have never sat them, or we could be sitting here talking <laughs> four weeks from now, going, boy, that was a great idea. <laughs> So, oh boy, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So oh. yeah. So I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, uh, obviously, the big topic of the week, uh, and I, I want to get your take on this. Uh, Terry Bradshaw's comments uh, towards Tomlin. Uh, Colin Tomlin uh, saying he's not a great coach. Uh, saying uh, he's nothing more than a cheerleader. Uh, very interesting comment. So, so for, from your standpoint, uh, obviously you, know, you played for the Steelers, uh, you know, in 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 you know what late eighties and, and nineties. If my brain hasn't shut down for the day yet, uh, you know, you're very close to the organization. Obviously, uh, 
talk a little bit about about his comments and and uh, you know what your feelings were with his comments and and, and how you know how does this you know and, and one thing that I thought was great was was really the kind of players rallied around Tomlin and said you yeah. know look at our guy but uh, strong comments uh, was it was it a wrong words being spoken uh, does Terry Bradshaw have that much of a of a disdain towards the organization what is it. Uh, you know, Terry's going to be Terry. Terry Terry going to say some things sometimes. Even the guys at, at the, in the studio look at him like, whoa, where did that come from, you know? And I think that sometimes when people say things, they don't really what they really know, realize what they said. You know, they didn't realize how it came out or they didn't realize what they meant in a certain way. But, I mean, he made a comment about after he left, you know, and – you don't take it, you know, the, the worst thing you can do is, you know, you say, hey, Terry's allowed to his opinion, you know, whatever it may be. But when you start, you know, you know, getting into it, now you got somebody taken away from the game. And it's great that the players, you know, uh, came to uh, Tomlin defense. They said, hey, you know, whatever that guy is, you know, Terry or whatever, you know, and they, they, they stood beside their coach. But for, for Terry to say that, it's not shocking. He says things like that. He bursts things out. And then, you know, a lot of players, you know, old guys got CTE. And sometimes, you know, that, that may be sitting in. And sometimes they say things that, will, you know, they don't know why we said it. But at the end of the day, the guys in the locker room believe in their coach. The owner believe in their coach. The fans are behind him. Terry lied to his opinion. He just move on. You don't continue to worry about that because you were focusing on that. The teams that are in front of you that are you going to play, you may get knocked off worrying about what Terry said. That should be, okay, we talked about it, we're going to move on. Because if you continue to talk about it, the other team is going to, uh, going to take advantage of you. Right, that's a good point. And, you know, your opinion, um, where would you rate Tomlin as far as the NFL coaches right now? I think he's in a uh, top ten, you know, of coaches. You know, I, I, don't, I don't see him being like in a uh, – for the top three, you know, because you, you got some coaches been around. But I think Tomlin is the kind of co- coach that I, I have that privilege of meeting Tomlin, and I know that he, if you ask him, there's certain things that he got to work on. Great guy, easy guy to talk to. But every once in a while, you get that little edge to yourself, you know, to let the players know that, hey, I am the coach, and this way things are going to be because you can't always be friends with the people you're working with. Sometimes you got to separate that. And I think sometimes, you know, Tomlin won't, you know, and I and I, I love him to death. But believe me, I would love to have a coach like that myself. You know, I had Coach No, who was more of a uh, teacher, you know, in your face. Hey, if you didn't do it, you don't play. I had Cower, who was more of, you know, hey, you know, uh, in your face and all that. And Tomlin had his mindset. He's in between Cower and... And and coach and coach no, you know. So for me to say, I think he's a top ten coach. Yeah, I, I, it's funny. I I went and started looking, and I started thinking, okay, you know, if you were going to put coaches in tiers, um, you know, obviously Belichick is number one right now. Yeah. I mean, as long as I as coaches, I don't. I, there's nobody else that's in his realm right now. But but coming out after that, I mean, I mean. Yeah. Who do you, who do you got? I mean, who do you got? I mean, obviously you can exactly. talk about. You know, I mean, you can talk about uh, uh, Seattle's head coach, and his name just went out of my head. Uh, Carol. You can talk about Carol. him, uh, Carol. Yeah, you can talk about him. Uh, but then after that, I mean, I mean, who's next? I mean, and really, when I started thinking about it, I, I, where? <laughs> <laughs> where, where you know, and I start, I seriously, I mean, you, 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 the comment being about you know great coaches in the NFL right now, exactly. And I started going, okay, well, Belichick's in the league of his own. I mean, you got Carroll, but then after that, where did you go? Exactly. Um, who are you going to put? I mean, I mean, obviously, now I will say this. I, I will say that you know Harbaugh with Baltimore, I would put him. I would put him up there as well. Uh, yeah. You know, that's a guy I would put up there. But, I mean, again, I mean, you, the, the pickings get a little slim after, uh, you know, after a few guys. So, 
<laughs> thought that was an interesting comment. I, I've been getting a lot of people, uh, yes, you know, asking me about that. And I said, oh, one thing, you know, we'll talk about that on the show because uh, really, uh, uh, I think it surprised people more than anything. Yes, me too. Um, I, I don't think people really thought that was going to come the way it did. So, Mm-mm. no, they uh, did not. Kind of surprising. Uh, so, with that, we got some, we got Cleveland this week. Uh, what's your keys to the game? Uh, I think it's, it's just that Cleveland got a little confidence right now. I'm telling you now, they, they're looking at like I guess Archery Three is coming back. They just beat the Chargers. And in a, in a good game, they, they felt like, okay, the Steelers are not playing most of their guys. They can look, I'm sure they, they, they read the paper. They see who's playing, who's not playing. To them, regardless of who's playing, if they get a win, they, they're happy. You know, they're happy. But the key to the game is you can't go out there if you're – I know you're trying to go out there and don't want, want to get hurt. But at the same time, you want to win the game because that's, that's one of those next-door neighbor robbery you want to win, regardless of who's out there. At the end of the day, you want to say we beat the Cleveland Browns. They want to say they beat the Steelers. And to them, going into the uh, off season with winning two games, even though it's a kind of chopped up roster that they're playing, that the Browns would be happy. But at the same time, and that's bragging rights. <laughs> Ugly it may seem, and they're about to say, oh, you know, we just so so didn't play. But they say, but well, yeah, we won. You know, so in that way, it's one of those, you don't want. You want to, it's good for Landry to get out there because I think this is last year of his contract, and I think a lot of guys need to show their stuff because this is one of those games that you can do it. And if you're under the contract or you're on the bubble or being in red next year, here's the time now to show the coaches that, hey, I'm that guy you're looking for. And that's an interesting uh, point you bring up. How, how big a game is this for Landry Jones? Uh, obviously, he's in the last year of his contract. Yes. Uh, has has not exactly endeared himself to dealer fans and things like that. Uh, he comes out and puts out a good performance. Uh, is he a guy that you resign next year? Hmm. You know, you look at you know it's only, it's, it's the Cleveland Browns. You know, but at the same time, you don't have lots of starters blocking for you, and you don't have the you don't have the presence of Bell and and Brown. So that's that kind of even things out. Yeah. So, give me your prediction. What do you? What kind of score are you looking at? What do you think is going to happen? Uh, I'm thinking it'd be 21, uh, 17 Steelers. The Browns gonna put some points up because I'm thinking RG3. You know he's gonna have a two-year contract, and the first year he kind of like just stole that, stole that money. So he figured that he had to do everything possible to show them that he can be the guy for them and stay healthy. So I think he's gonna do everything possible. Do you know to carry them on his back? So I think it'd be seventeen twenty one. Yeah, I'm going to go seventeen ten Pittsburgh. I think it's going to be a defensive game, and I think in the end, I think the defense will will do enough, maybe get a score, a pick six, something like that, and and that will be the difference in the game. So okay. I think it's going to be a little bit more of a defensive game, uh, yeah. especially with all the starters being out offensively. I think. Defense is going to have to have to be the one that wins this game, I think. And uh, Cleveland, obviously, this is the game that they're going to want for no other reason, just bragging rights. And but I, I think seventeen ten is what I'm kind of looking at. So, mm. but uh, well, yeah. with that, man, we will wrap this up this yeah. week. Yeah. Kind of a quick week because next week yeah. we will have a lot of playoff talk to talk about. Uh, do they play any next final weekend? words this week? Do they play next weekend? What's that? Yeah, on the wild card? yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be uh, either either Saturday or Sunday. I'm not sure what day it'll be yet. I don't think it's come out yet, but um, wow. I think that'll come out probably in the weekend. But yeah, it's a Kansas wild Miami. card weekend. It's at their first probably maybe Kansas City or Miami they play. Uh, looks like it, and unless right now with the wild card, unless uh, Miami, if Miami. Miami has to lose. No, uh, Miami has to lose, and no, Kansas City has to win, and Miami has to win and beat uh, uh, New England. Oh, and well, then it will go. be Kansas City. But right now, everything points to it being Miami. Okay. 
Hey, that, that, that's what so, they're the one who started that losing streak on the Steelers. So it'd be a good team to bring back. Yeah, and 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 right now, I mean, the the playoffs. Uh, if everything goes the way it is right now, uh, the playoffs are going to be interesting because Pittsburgh's first two games could very well be against teams that lost their starting quarterback for the season. Whoa! So the the, Did not the know road that. to the road to New England could be Miami that lost their starting quarterback and Oakland that lost theirs. So. Wait a minute. Uh, so, uh, Carr's gone? Yeah, yeah. Uh, broke his leg. <gasps> I did not know that. Did yeah, not know he that. Yeah, broke his leg. Broke his leg. Uh, oh, my Saturday. goodness. Yeah. So, wow. It, the, the, the playoffs have gotten very interesting. We're now where Oakland was kind of the team everybody thought was going to play New England. Yes. Now, yes. Um, it could very well shake out to be. Uh, you know, Pittsburgh could have the road to face the two teams that lost their quarterback. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that something? Yeah, so amazing wow. how things happen sometimes. So It is. It is, my brother. All right, well, we will get together next week and do it again. Uh, yes, sir. You going you gonna to be able to enjoy the game this week? I think I am. I think I'm going to be able to enjoy this game, and you should be able to enjoy the game. I don't know. You're getting ready for your season. You know, you 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 right around the corner for yours. So you know. yeah, we are. Anybody that wants to follow us, uh, www.wfnighthawks.com. Uh, join in the fun. We are, and, and and the great thing is, is our colors are black and yellow as well. So it, it oh, really? kind of goes with that nice <laughs> thing. So, you know, that works out really well. So especially oh, for good. me. So, if you're not, if you weren't a Steelers fan, if you were like a Bengals or Browns fan right now, you'd be rolling over on the floor. But, you know, we're not wasting uh, minutes, so. Oh, that's good. But, I'm glad. Yeah. So, everybody, uh, enjoy the show, and uh, we will be back next week. Uh, everybody, have a great week. <laughs>